Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So, very nervous moment for me. I'm always positive and confident behind the camera, but it's a bit different this time. As you can see, I am not holding the camera. If I can just turn it round, I've got an extra pair of hands with me and I'll explain why later on in the video. Now, first of all, I want to apologize to uh, everybody who's been subscribing following and also commenting you know asking where i've been and the god's honest truth is i have been absolutely mad busy lately the company's going through different things at the moment i'm managing two people instead of one i know it's not a good enough excuse and i did say i would post more but i'm only being honest with you so i'll give you a quick update to what we are up to today as you can see we're packed up and i have an extra person with me and we are packed up in the lovely mountains of italy now the reason there is two people over with us is A, Tom wanted to gather a bit of experience. Um, I've met Tom through social media. We got talking over social media. He's done a couple of uh, trips with me. We, kept, we became friends and Tom said, look, I'd really love to get back involved in doing European. Would you mind if I come on a trip with you? And conveniently enough, um, we had a job come through. Now we have our regular customer who is absolutely fantastic, pays us on time, everything like that, mint. But we do source other work from other places when we can. I had a company message me the other day and they offered us a run down to Italy. They had an express run. They needed it there within a short time of, uh, within a short period of time. So I turned to Tom and I rang Tom up and I said, hi hey Tom, um, do you still fancy doing that trip out to Europe? And Tom was like, yeah, of course, you know, still wanting to learn, blah, blah, blah. So I told Tom, this is what I've got. I've got a load out of the uh, Midlands, heading down to Italy, and then I'll be reloading my usual reload from my normal customer back do you fancy coming along and here i am now <laughs> thomas has come and joined <laughs> us so the reason we bring tom is and if anyone obviously doesn't understand a few people watch these who are truckers and a few people don't the reason we've got tom with us is because we do what is called a double drive um i don't know if you've ever seen where there's two people in a truck that is normally because they are doing a double drive which means they have double the hours so it as a truck driver we have to stop every nine hours of driving or every 10 if you want to extend well if you have two drivers you can do up to 20 hour driving continuously so it's a hell of a lot different and that has managed to us to do the job as best as we can now i can't tell you too many details about the job as it was event it was something to do with an event and it was kind of on the hush rush and it's a new customer and i don't want them to stumble across this video me tell all the secrets about the job and then i get no further work off them but that is why Tommy's with me, so fantastic. We can double drive back, which will put me back, and we can make lots and lots of money because I'll get some more work, and it'll be a fantastic week. But as you can see, the vehicle is not moving. Now, the reason the vehicle is not moving is quite plain and simple. This is the tunnel, which I've referred to in previous videos as the Mont Blanc tunnel that, that transit from Italy into France it's closed <laughs> so we was doing fantastic on time i knew it shut tonight half past seven and we was absolutely smashing it we got our reload on everything was going down to a t absolutely fantastic and something really bad happened we got stopped by customs now this is becoming a more regular thing um, and i can't explain why we are being stopped so much by customs but we are now as a company i can assure you we don't do anything that we shouldn't be doing all our documents, all our vehicle documents, all our company documents, taxes, everything is paid. But it's a process we have to go through. And as you can see to the left now, if Tom's willing to film very quickly, there is a police car just doing round, doing the checks, and we are being on our best behaviour, making sure we don't go to the Mont Blanc when it is closed. But we are currently in a predicament where I keep getting stopped by customs. Now, we was doing perfect for time. The Mont Blanc tunnel shut at half past seven and we was planning on getting up here for seven o'clock, transiting the tunnel into France where we would have swapped shift and that would have got us back to the UK home tomorrow. Now, that isn't going to happen. The tunnel shut. I did have alternative options. One of them options would be transiting Swiss over the Alps into Switzerland, back into France and that would avoid going through the Mont Blanc tunnel. The problem I have with that is to transit Swiss, we use what is called a T1 form to transit England, uh, to, to France, Italy, blah, 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 blah. Now, Switzerland is not part of the European Committee, and that requires a T2 customs forms, which I don't have. I can get them, which isn't a problem, 
but half past seven at night, all the offices are closed. By the time it would have got come to sorting round, going to Switzerland, the possible problems that I could have faced, it wasn't worth it. We've had to park the truck up for tonight and head across in the morning. The other option I had is another tunnel, which is called the Fraser's Tunnel. That is again, once out of Italy into France, pretty similar to this, the same cost, but it is more towards Turin and Lyon. Um, and unfortunately, we was too far up to turn round. If we were to turn back round now, we'd have an extra two hours back the way we came to go back. It's not gonna be worth it and not cost effective considering the rates the jobs are paying. So, that is where we're up to now. Now, if you grab that off you, Thomas, if you look round us, I don't know if you can see a bit more in detail, but just over here is the Mont Blanc tunnel. And this is basically the B road. Now, I don't normally take this road. We normally use the motorway that takes us straight down. But there's a holding area at the bottom of the Mont Blanc, which I could have stopped at, but we chose to get up further so that tomorrow our day has already started as close as we can get, which then obviously will allow Tom, who's doing his shift, to go further on. So that's the plan for tomorrow. So as I was saying, sorry about that, I took a phone call, uh, so I'll have to edit that out. Uh, so as we were talking about this here, this yellow cap, now you won't see this in most trucks anymore, uh, which is quite a sad factor. Uh, this is fluid for your clutch pedal. Now don't tell me what, I won't tell you what all that mechanism there is because I don't know term for term. All I know is that this helps the clutch, which if you follow me around, Tom's laughing in the bag. <laughs> if you follow me around this truck here, has a clutch pedal there. So if you don't know, the gear stick, blah, 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 that operates the clutch. There you go. <laughs> the next fluid we come into, which we've just recently spoke about, is the coolant, obviously, for the engine. Then you've got the red cap, which is the oil, and the blue cap, which is pl plain and simple, the screen wash, the most important one. Always make sure that's full. The rest don't care about. <laughs> this is your pollen filter. Now, although it doesn't look good, that is potentially what could be coming through the vents uh, and into your breathing system, obviously. Because when you're obviously putting the vents on, it's trapping the air from outside and pushing it into the cab. All the dust and things like that, it can get quite on top of you. Um, you don't see it or feel it, but if you've got a lot of sand and you're in a gritty area and things like that, it ends up going through and you end up with coughs, stuff, things. Uh, if you sleep with the aircon on and things like that, it, it just can become really bad. So I try and change my pollen filter every six months. I know people might say every month, they're only a couple of quid, they're not actually worth much money. Um, and so be it, so yeah. Sorry about that once again. Believe it or not, if I turn over, just show up on the camera. <laughs> We got interrupted by four men who belong, who belong, who, who are from the um, United Emirates of Dubai. I think that's how they call it. They're from Dubai. Yes, they are in a Fiat Punto, not a Lamborghini. So um, they were struggling to fuel the car. See you later, guys. Uh, they were struggling to fuel the car because the car was declining at the pumps. They had no fuel. So we've just fueled the car up for them. And uh, they give us 50 euros because I put 50 euros of fuel in. They didn't give us an extra 50 euros for some tea, but they did give us 10 euros for a drink. So I've made a tenner, so it's all right. Anyway, back to trucking. So as we were saying, pollen filter, uh, we try and change that regularly, just because as you can see, if you go close up, Tom, it's absolutely minging. It just sucks all the um, rubbish out of you. So uh, yeah, now, Dropping that down, I don't I think I've already covered all the new features, so we'll skip that bit. Uh, if you haven't seen him, I've just added some new lights, which turn into a couple of beacons, as Tom would know. <laughs> um, and that's it. I've currently got Jamie's trailer on at the moment. Um, this one's not been sign written. It is going to get sign written in the next couple of weeks. The 14th of August, we're going to close the company down for a week because it, become, it, it comes into a shortfall. Um, where basically Europe goes quiet. Now, August is a very difficult time to do European work and I'm, it's something that I'm not prepared for yet as it's my first August as a business owner, especially as a European company. I'm hoping by then I have some contacts. Um, but what happens in August is school holidays, your six week holidays. And it's quite simple, a lot of places in Europe just close down for August. Most of them will do the first two week of August, and then the other half that didn't do the first two week of August 
we'll do the other two week of August. So it becomes quite difficult. Now, I'm on the groupage work, so fingers crossed it doesn't go that bad for me. What tends to happen is they fill the stockage up before August and kind of we treacles through. So I'll let you know, obviously, over the course how that goes on. So guys, welcome back. Now, we have abandoned the truck today. Um, we was going to go to the hotel. I don't know if we showed it. Um, Tom, did we show it? No. No. There was a hotel right next to the truck stop. Uh, we walked in, but because it's not the holiday season, the hotel was closed. And me and Tom have got no work on in the truck. Two people in a truck is just absolutely a nightmare. You're having to move all your stuff off the top bunk. Tom's having to get up, and then during the night, he's, he needs to go to the toilet. He's getting down. So tonight, the blank was short. We said, you know what? We've worked hard this week. We've earned some good money. Let's treat ourselves. So we've checked ourselves into a little chalet. Now, the quality isn't great uh, on my little screen. I don't know how it'll look on your bigger screen. Um, so you can see the outlines of the mountains, things like that. There's an absolute insane view here, which we'll try and cover on tomorrow's part of the vlog. But we've checked into ourselves into this little... Um, hut chalet thing absolutely amazing um it was 113 euros for the night which isn't too bad um that worked that were nice and steady and then yeah so we've just had a nice chateau brillant tom is just having a cigarette and that's it really so i'll show you the room in a minute where we're going to sleep tonight thankfully we have got separate beds because at first they did put us in the same bed but obviously we don't want to be doing that um and that's Tom it. Have just checked into our room, which obviously we required because we needed some aircon. Because <laughs> there's none in the truck, which is the whole point of coming to a hotel, yeah? Yeah. Because showers are free in the services and we could have had one of them tomorrow morning. But the main point was the heat, weren't it? Yeah. So we've booked ourselves into a wood log cabin, which holds the heat because it's not it's not IKEA wood, this is proper wood. And uh <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> I hope you I hope you don't stand up while you're uh, asleep tonight. So this is uh Tom's room. As you can see there is no, there's no space, never mind Ercom. And then it is followed by the uh master suite which is kind of a bit bigger. Lovely, but once again, no work on whatsoever. Thanks, Tom. So, but the good thing is, we do have a shower. Now, the facilities are fantastic. Um, but I will, I'm, I, well, I'm just shy, just shy of six foot, so <laughs> I will be washing on, uh, the bean tonight but look it's uh it's a shower somewhere to get our head down we're up at half past five in the morning and uh bon nuit mon ami see you all in good the morning good morning everybody and as you can see nice and bright and early currently 5am the monte bianco opens up at 6am but we have the only bad thing with having a truck is you can't just get it to anywhere you want so we've had to do about what would you say a mile walk yeah, we've had to do about a mile walk we've just woke up so we're heading back to the truck now ready to start the day <laughs> back at the vehicle now um and just want to uh just show you what i do when i go around i do this every morning and i think it's a good routine you need to check one thing you need to check if you follow me tom the first thing I like to check is this, the pin. So I'll always get on that. Um, and as you can see, the dog clip is still in. The pin has not been released. Nice and secure, not moving anywhere. I know no one's tampered with it. Now, one thing you have to check is, obviously, some people will pull it. Um, it's never happened to me, touch wood, but it's always worth the check because one day, if they've pulled it, you drive off, the trailer staying where it is. Just going around then, checking my seals. The problem we've got at the moment is obviously we're heading back to the UK. We want to be checking for immigration. We want to be checking for any uh, contraband that's been put on the vehicle. Things like that. So the, tra 
trailers are over sealed so i put a seal in basically everywhere i can that i know they need to open the curtains are really tight so it's not like they can worm their way in get under here there's nowhere for it to go because the curtain is just ten there's too much tension on the curtain for them to be able to tamper with it hence why i open it i i do it really nice and tight walking around checking curtain make sure there's no slashes opening any external compartments making sure nobody's put any packages in that we don't want go around the vehicle not even been in the vehicle yet this is just the external checks giving a check of the tires i know it's a brand new trailer but once again you need to check three quarters of the tire make sure the tread depth is over six not point six millimeters so we have to check that now we've parked in a bush which isn't great so we're going to pull that forward but just going around check all the other tires same again with the curtain suspension valve and checking the seals are intact now it is full of stick, like stinging nettles and grass and i don't really want to stand in it so we'll check the other side pull it forward do the same with the back doors check the back doors make sure they're safe make sure my padlock and the seals are still on good chances even though i've done all these checks when i get up to cali i will still open the trailer up and i will still check visually inside to make sure there's nobody in because i can't see the roof see you later So, pulling the vehicle forward, what we've done while we're inside is obviously put our card in. Started the card off straight away, nice and easy setup. And then what we've done is we've let the air build up and we've turned the engine off, which now allows me to listen for any air leaks, any defects to do with the air system. If you follow me around, I'm just gonna stick my head in here. Nothing quite important, I'm just listening for any Susie leakage, making sure there's no feedback from the air, any air leaks or anything like that. Same again as I'm walking down the vehicle, just listening out, plain and simple. If there's any valves, anything like that that's leaking, I'll be able to sort that out. Now, coming around to the back doors, checking seals. Seals are intact, pulling on them a little bit. Now, what the, what the um, migrants are known to do is cut the seal, and then what they'll do is they'll put a bit of glue and just glue it back together. So on your visual inspection, it looks like all the seals are intact but just giving them a bit of a pull not too hard obviously they're on the plastic seals just checking everything's okay uh, we'll open that up in a minute i've left the keys inside just pulling and then same again along this side checking for any contraband any external storage quite simply opening up checking there's not much room in there that we can put anything in and just closing it up be good if they had a seal on there to be fair. Mm. Once again, tyres. Don't know how to get my hands really mucky. You can quite see from a distance there's loads of tread on them. It's a brand new trailer. Um, and I so far we go on. Chicken leg <laughs> landing legs are down. Uh, oh, sorry. I know that sounds stupid, but you never know. Someone could have wound them down during the night. Fuel caps are still on, seals are intact. Same again with the tyres on the unit. And then just a visual inspection at the front, mainly to see how good looking my truck is. <laughs> so that is us. Tom, if you want to show everybody the beautiful morning scenery. Let's get trucking. So we are back on the road. Tom has started the first leg of the journey and we are off up the Monte Bianco. It's quite different when you're a passenger, you get to look at a bit more. That's me. <laughs> absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love this part of the journey. This has to be, I would say, the favorite part of the entire journey. 
the Mont Blanc entrance is literally just there where all them flags are, I don't know if you can see it, so we're just going to literally climb up and head through the Blanc. As you can see, we're currently dropping down what I like to describe the scariest part of the journey. Um, I've explained this on many other vlogs, and I know a few people who like that vlog. Um, and it's a bit different now because I can talk to you a little bit more without having to concentrate as Tom is currently driving and he has taken the rope. So I've just dismounted the camera. As you can see, this is what I like to call um, the road of death. That's what how I call it. I think it's a fantastic road. Uh, but it is very dangerous due to um, brake fade. Now, obviously, if you've watched previous vlogs, you'll understand what I mean by brake fade. As you can see, Tom is currently not using the brake. He's using just the engine brake and the gear lever, which is another plus side of having the manual. You can control the gears, and you're just dropping down nice and steady. Now, these things here, these red things with the gravel, if nobody's seen them, what they are called is escape lanes. Now what that is is basically if the um truck breaks over here and the truck fails to stop you can then jump into that lane and the gravel will just completely stop the truck and put it to a standstill um and not putting you into the wall or even worse over that ledge now as you can see this is tom's first time coming down here in many many years he's left his engine brake on and uh as you can see, it is absolutely tight. Now, some trucks, like the one behind us, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, they like to rush down, and we don't do that. We take it nice and steady. The advisory is 30 kilometers. I mean, it's I do, do go a little bit faster than that, but as you can see, I'm gonna just turn that mirror there. Nice and windy and bendy, but a lovely bit of road to drive on. Um, a lot different to the way up, which is what we call the ski slope. That's just a direct motorway up now. A bit of old school reminiscing for you, for all the uh, older boys who watch this. This used to be the only way up and down the Monte Bianco. So what you'd have is a truck coming up and a truck coming down at the same time. And as you can see by Tom's snake trail of the trailer, it is a very, very tight road. And I'm guessing it used to be even a little bit tighter because they have just done roadworks on it. Um, I know when my father was... Uh, a European truck and I used to come with him I don't remember this bit so it must have been past 1998 I roughly started going with my dad this bridge was already built so it was prior to that my dad did tell me he used to do this when he first started European it used to take him I think he don't quote me on this and if anybody watching this these vlogs who have uh, done European back in the day and did this road um, my dad used to say it used to take him about two to three hours to get from the bottom to the top. Um, now, obviously, with the express motorway, it takes you maybe half an hour up, and uh, I reckon half an hour back down. 
I always say, um, especially to Tom, continue using your engine brake, lower gears, no rush, don't care about anybody else. Everybody else is irrelevant. All you're bothered about is getting this vehicle down to the bottom. We're not overly heavy this week, which is fantastic. Um, so it doesn't put that added pressure on you because it's hard to explain on video the feeling. Um, and Tom, I don't know if you'll agree with me, that the pressure that's behind you pushing the force of the vehicle down and, and, and knowing, I think in the back of your mind as well, it's a lot of knowing that there's a wall in front of you yeah, it's and a lot of uh, it's a lot of concentration, and you've just got to keep your eyes on the ball. You just cannot get off of that at all. You've just got to focus at all times. Yeah, so. Absolutely beautiful. So we have down, just made it down what I, what I call it the wall of the, the road of death. Um, do you, and it's purely just because of the brake fade. Um, if you are new to driving, you know, and you do have an engine brake, you know, get used to using it. Even if you're in the UK. It's not a bad habit to get used to using something, even though you might never use it, and there's not many roads that you, you should need it on. It's fantastic for the vehicle. Obviously, it saves brake lining. You know, you could save your company a lot of money by using it. Um, and also, it gives you that experience on how to brake. So that is us now. We're gonna go. I'm gonna do a bit of a time lapse now while we're driving. Um, I'm just gonna kick back and relax. Keep an eye on Tom the Apprentice, mm -hmm. and then we're going to head down the road, and hopefully we will be um, at the boat in about seven to eight hours. See you soon. done a bit of time lapse doing the driving we're just getting on the boat now i don't know if tom wants to show you we're literally about to board the boat sadly enough we just missed the brand new piano boat which i was really looking forward to trying out uh, it's a brand new boat uh pioneer i think it's called the newest uh, p &O boat which saves crossing times up to 20 minutes as it's got a bridge on both ends now if you don't know what a bridge is 
it's where the captain of the boat steers the boat from uh, it's called the bridge a bit like a cockpit on a plane a bit like a cab on a truck on a ferry it is called the bridge um, and we missed it so unfortunately we are back on the p &O boat but it is the old boat but we're gonna have a lovely time out with Tom no, amazing Tom is doing the last leg of the journey hence why we're doing a bit of filming now Tom's gonna film me getting onto the boat uh, anything I need to point out to help anybody out that's getting on the boat it's fairly simple I have covered it in previous vlogs but you know bit of a refresher not everybody watches every vlogs so stay tuned listen out for it and uh, Tom first of all let me just quickly interview you how's your week been before you go absolutely amazing and that's enough because we're going <laughs> <laughs> talk to the camera Tom it's been an absolute pleasure working for DC honestly massive massive eye-opener didn't realize how bad Italian drivers were but if you're Italian watching this by the way it didn't mean that <laughs> <laughs> no but the guys out in in Italy absolutely lovely guys very helpful and very caring so yes so this is us getting on the boat would you um, would you recommend Tom for somebody getting into European so if I, for example try and come out with me for a week to experience it or would you recommend would you recommend basically anybody coming with me for a week oh 100 percent yeah 100 percent have you yeah. i've learned a lot have you hell of a lot that, i've learned so much yeah hell of a lot but how to use a gearbox how to break a gearbox <laughs> <laughs> and here we are oh we're on top deck as well well we're the royal to this you know <laughs> it's not very often we get top deck is he going to lean over my side? Probably not. Yeah, you'll have to throw him that. Thank you, sir. As you can see, you have to give the ticket to the guy before you enter the boat. And this is us going onto the top deck. Oh, there's a back clinking that you hear. He's Tom's French wine that he's taking home with him. <laughs> So these have a similar setup, Tommy. You see the sides of the boat? Yeah. This is the similar setup. Oh, you know, is it? was pointing it out. Yeah. About the new one. But this, this one had to reverse, though, wouldn't it? This one will have to go out and then turn round. Right. So it's the turn. That's the good looking radar, by the way. <laughs> so, what I would say quickly before I get on, you'll see in a minute we'll have a boat marshal. What I would say to anybody who's new who's getting on the boat, let them direct you. Don't don't worry about your mirrors, things like that. Let the marshals guide you in. So as you can see, he's just pointing. We are going to be on the wall, which is quite uh, not great. Because the wall means one thing, doesn't it, Tom? It means we're last out. It means we are last off the boat. Get Following the marshal, he's gonna tell me to get behind him and stick it as far over as I can. I'll give him a flash. And we are going as far over as we can, so which means one thing due to my um, wide load on my top, which is my stomach, um, it means we're gonna be getting out of your side. He's not asked me to do this, but the reason I'm doing this is because what happens is they plank a lot more people on and uh, they end up scraping down the side of your cab or taking the motor off. So if I can move that extra couple of centimetres over and keep my unit and trailer straight, then I hopefully when I get back off the boat, I'll still have a... Um, a truck all in one piece, so that is us Tom, electrics off, let's go and get some food. Welcome back guys, so we've just landed in England and I quickly wanted to show you this, if you quickly show you Tom, for anybody that don't know Dover, 
uh, it can be quite easily made the mistake of going down the um, M2 or the M20 um, and it can end up costing you a bit of time because the M2, M20, once you've committed to it, you can't come back on the um, A2. So if you are going on to the M20, which we are, we normally run up the M2, but due to closures, um, we're gonna have to go to the M20 and then up to the 25. Um, we're keeping in our left lane, but you'll see what I mean in a minute if um, Tom does the filming. Now this is just a customs checkpoint, which is apparently random. I don't know about that. Um, if Tom sits back and doesn't make it too obvious, we might get away with it, but um, this bit here is quite plain and simple. You just drive nice and slowly out of customs and hopefully they don't stop you so we will see in a minute Thomas no it doesn't look like there's anybody outside the one thing to look for is the people standing outside this little tower in the middle if you can see it here I like to give myself plenty of room from the vehicle in front I think we're gonna be clear here Tom so yeah, that there is where they would stop you and they'd give you a designated shed uh, which as you can see by the um, by the signs in front of you I don't know if Tom, could, you'll be able to catch them there's a, um, I think that's a hexagon and a circle I don't know what that is Diamond A diamond and a circle <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then you just go into customs through there but we are clear now so it's just a case of driving out of the port it's basically what you're doing at this point is um, a bit like I don't know if you've ever watched Nothing to Declare when you go on holiday. Um, this is quite simple. You're just driving past all the exits now, and obviously it's too late to declare anything. If you get caught with anything, obviously it, it, it's it's too late. You, you're going to be prosecuted for it. This here, if you see that little white van there, these are where they hold the vehicles that have committed any offences and things like that. What they do is they reverse you onto a bay and from that bay there they will empty the vehicle do the checks that is required on the vehicle i.e they may unload it they may cut things open um and then from there they will seize the vehicle so that is it we're gonna now head up to the m20 um where i'm gonna be dropping tom off and then i will be continuing the night shift all the way home i'm gonna sign off and end the video here um, and I'll put it all together and upload it. And I don't know if Tom wants to say a, a final farewell. Go on, Tom. <laughs> See you later, guys. And thank you very much, Dave, for uh, for letting me come along. And if you subscribe and like, would you quit your job and come and be the cameraman all the time? I tell you what, asking for the feedback was it? Is it better like that? much money. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your feedback. Let us know how you, um, if you prefer the camera angle, somebody else holding the camera, etc. And that's us for now. Ta-da.